Coming up on this edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU, we preview the men's and women's swimming program, and we also take a season preview of softball. All that and much more right here on Panther Sports Talk. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running. Welcome back to Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser. We're joined now by EIU men's and women's swimming coach, Elliot McGill. And Elliot, you guys... We'll wrap up the regular season here this weekend and swimming's a little bit different than it seems to really extend a lot farther over the course of the school year than I think a lot of people realize you guys started back in October and you'll go almost till March yeah uh, it's a, it's a long season I mean they even start training the in the first week of September and so they're going pretty much from September until the very end of February if not March now you guys will have your final home meet this weekend or this Friday actually against St. Louis and you guys will do senior day there and you have you have a, a a decent number of seniors but more so on the men's side than on the women's side. Yeah yeah our, our senior class for the men um, has done a great job the, the women's class is, is very strong um, the nice thing is is that there's only nine total and um, we have a great recruiting class coming in next year. Now I guess explain to me a little bit how that works it's it's the one sport that a that you actually are in a, you compete in a different element than, than everything else and the fact that you're not going to the parents aren't going to go in the water evidently and, yeah. and do any sort of recognitions do you do things differently for senior day because I, I see you guys you go out there and you swim a good hour before the meet ever happens yeah. and then they kind of cool down so do you just kind of have to alter your schedule a little bit to make that happen no uh, yeah I mean they uh, they're going to warm up uh, try to keep it really normal we'll cut off the warm up a little bit earlier uh, leading right up to the meet um, kind of that last minute shoot around as if it were to be basketball and um, and the kids will they kind of line up and um, kind of form a tunnel and the, the seniors run through it and, and they kind of receive their their senior gifts and um, then we try to get the meet going right away. Now you guys had a home meet last weekend you went against rival Western Illinois yeah. the men fell just short and the women really dominated so I guess you got to be happy with your young women's team really posting a big victory there. Yeah, the, the nice thing about the women's team was um, we, we went out and we won um, pretty much every event, but if we, when we did win, we also went second and third, or at least got second and third. And, and so um, it really showed the depth of the team. We also swam some off events, so not all of our women were swimming their strongest events. Um, and the men's performance was very strong. Um, had we swam um, just a little bit better on, on a couple of different events, we would have been able to kind of grab those few points. But at the end of the day, they swam very well. Now, different than when you guys will go to your conference meeting, sometimes I think when you guys go on the road, when you're here at home, you guys don't count the diving points at all. Teams already understand that. So yeah. it was you truly won or lost based on, based on what you did on the pool. There were no, I guess, spotting the other team so many points for diving. Yeah, and that's always hard when you go on the road. Um, the team does a great job at mentally being tough and just knowing and recognizing that that's the situation. Um, and, and we've done a great job at going on the road and competing well with that. But uh, the nice thing about the St. Louis meet coming up is it'll be without diving. And, and then when we go to conference, diving will hurt us a little bit. But at the end of the day, we, we have the opportunity to score just as many points as any team there. And um, that's what we can control. Now, you talked about going to the conference meet. Following this weekend, you guys will have two weeks before you go to the conference meet. And the, the conference meet extends out a little bit longer in terms of the fact that a lot of kids compete in a lot of different events and they want to make it the most equitable, I guess, that they can. And so it really stretches over three or four days. So uh, you can score points with, I guess, a, a limited number of swimmers if they're really good in certain events. Yeah, the, the conference rules are you can score up to 18 swimmers within your team and each swimmer is allowed to do three individual events. And so, um, you know, we have a number of men and women on the team that can score in, in three events at the conference meet. It's everyone's goal to at least score in one event. Um, and then you, you can participate in up to four relays. Um, and so if you're one of our, our better swimmers, our studs, 
um, you're going to possibly swim 11 times over the course of three or four days, which uh, it's a lot. Now, um, some of the swimmers that are doing really well for you guys right now on the women's side, you have a couple that are standing out. I know Olga Livschitz is a, is a, a a swimmer that's been with you guys for a couple of years, but you also have some other young swimmers that are up and coming that people may recognize over the next couple of years. Yes, um, Olga has is, is done a great job. It's her senior year. She's one of the best backstrokers we've ever had come through the program. Um, Kate Page has had an excellent uh, couple of years as a senior. But some of the younger swimmers that have really stood out have definitely been Kaylee Morris, who's a freestyler for us. Um, she's, she's very close to breaking a number of school records. Um, and is, has a bright future for the next couple of years. Um, but then you also have um, Paige Evenson is a butterflyer. Fallon Schwaki is, is a freshman distance swimmer who's won a couple of events for us um, over the last uh, couple of months. And, and then the entire sophomore class is, is really starting to round out. Now on the men's side, uh, I don't want you to feel like you're a homer here, but your, yeah. your brother Colin is one of the better swimmers on, on the men's yes. team as he's kind of stood out. He actually got to go to the senior nationals earlier this year as an individual, but some other guys are kind of right there challenging him and are, have kind of stood out in other events as well. Yes, um, the nice thing about the men's team is we don't have any sophomores and we have um, 12 underclassmen, sophomores and freshmen. Um, all 12 of those underclassmen are capable of scoring at the conference meet. Um, Harris Thompson has had a phenomenal year as a freshman, breaking um, a 20-year-old mile record for us. Um, Brogan O'Doherty, a backstroker, has really filled in uh, the role that Shakur Coop had last year for us. Um, and so um, I'm, I, I could name every single one of them, and, but they're all doing a great job filling their roles in. All right, and you can see the seniors and the rest of the swimmers this weekend. On Friday night, actually, they will host St. Louis at the Padovan Pool, and then in two weeks, they will be off to the Summit League Championships. Coach, best of luck this weekend, and the best of luck at the Conference Championships. We'll be right back with This Week in EIU Athletics. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. Men's basketball went 1-1 one one in the road in OVC play last week. They're now 4-5 and five in OVC play and 7-13 and overall after losing at UT Martin 84-77 and winning at Southeast Missouri State 77-74. The men's team is back at Lance Arena Tuesday night against Cleveland State. For the result and stats, check out EIUPanthers.com and also stay tuned as later on in Panther Sports Talk we'll have highlights of Tuesday night's game against Cleveland State. Women's basketball now 3-6 in the OVC and 8-12 and overall after dropping both games on the road in OVC play at Southeast Missouri State and UT Martin. Indoor track was back at the Lance Fieldhouse hosting the John Craft invite and EIU posted 20 first place finishes. Men's and women's swimming back at Padovan Pool as they took on in-state rival Western Illinois. And the men fell just short in their meet, 105 to 100. They're now 0 and 7 on the season. The women's team picked up their second win of the season. They're now 2 and 6 overall, as they won over Western Illinois, 146 to 57. Men's and women's tennis both in action this past weekend. The men's team won over St. Louis 4-3. They're now 1-0 on the season. And the women's team also starts the season 1-0, winning 4-3 at Illinois State. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Friday, swimming is back at Padovan Pool as they take on St. Louis at 5 o'clock. Track begins a two-day run at the Northern Iowa meet with competition starting at 5 o'clock. On Saturday, track wraps up competition at the Northern Iowa meet. Competition starts at 10 a.m. And it's a Panther basketball doubleheader at Lance Arena as the men's and women's teams take on OVC and in-state rival SIU Edwardsville. The men's game at 2, the women's game at 4.15. Both games on WEIU-TV, or you can listen to them on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. Also on Saturday, men's tennis is at Michigan State at 5 o'clock, and the women's team is at St. Francis, Illinois at 5.30. On Sunday, men's tennis with an early Sunday morning match against Chicago State. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kabasiun. Eastern Illinois Panther basketball is on WEIU. In-state rivals collide at Lance Arena as EIU and SIU Edwardsville meet in an OVC Western Division matchup. It's the Panthers and Cougars Saturday at 2 and 4.15 on WEIU, your home for Panther basketball. And now on Panther Sports Talk, a look at Panther basketball. Both teams on how they've done in recent games scoring leaders, and where they stand in OVC play. First, the women's team, now 8-12 on the season and 3-6 in OVC play. 
The Panthers fell at OVC leader UT Martin 103-84 on Monday night, despite shooting 60% from the field, and Caitlin Payne tied an EIU record with seven three-pointers made in the game. The 84 points scored against the Skyhawks on Monday night was a single game high for this season. Through 20 games, Sabina Orosova is the Panthers' scoring leader with 17.9 points per game, and she's averaging 10.4 rebounds per game. Caitlin Payne upped her scoring average to 14.1 points per game, and on the season, she's shooting 39% behind the three-point line. Jordan Crunk continues her solid senior season, averaging 12.3 points per game, and is averaging 4.3 assists per game. And looking at OVC standings for the EIU women's team, they're currently in fourth place in the OVC Western Division, behind UT Martin, Austin P, and Southeast Missouri State. And looking at the overall OVC standings with all 12 teams, the Panthers currently sit in 10th place at 3-6 overall. And now a look at the men's team. They're coming off a win at Southeast Missouri State on Saturday night, 77-74. They're now 7-13 overall and 4-5 and in OVC play. The men's team has won three out of their last five games. The Panthers are currently averaging 65 points per game and are shooting 43% from the field. And when the Panthers score 67 points or more, they're 6-3 on the season and have also shown solid play in close games Paving the way for the Panthers through 18 games is Reggie Smith, averaging 13.4 points per game and is also averaging 3.3 assists per game. Senior forward Sherman Blanford in 20 games played is averaging 11.3 points per game and 6.7 rebounds per game. Chris Olivier in 11 games played this season is averaging 10.5 points per game and is notching 4.2 rebounds per game. Now we take a look at the OVC standings for the men's team. They currently sit in third place in the OVC Western Division behind Murray State and SIU Edwardsville. And a look at the OVC overall standings for the men's team. EIU sits in sixth place with a four and five mark in conference play. Now we take a look at some highlights from Tuesday night's non-conference matchup as EIU took on Cleveland State at Lance Arena. And now we turn our attention to softball with new head coach Angie Nicholson and Hannah Minniga previewing the upcoming softball season for the OVC defending champion Panthers. EIU softball is coming off a season where they went 20-3 in conference play, earning the number one seed in the OVC tournament. But after a loss to Murray State in the quarterfinal round, they'll be looking to a new coach and some veteran players to go all the way this year. It's one of those things that it's, it could be good or bad. And, you know, coming in with veterans and, and kids, you know, they've done well. 
um, and you know they're older. I, but the the thing is, coming in as a new coach, when you have older kids, they've done things, you know, the same way for the past three years. So to get them to understand and to buy into what you're doing, um, which is different from what they've done in the past, that has been um, that's the challenge. And and let me say, I will say this though, they have completely opened up and uh, bought into what we're doing. They understand what we're doing, and so we're really excited about it. Uh, I think working hard in practice and staying healthy this year. I mean, if we practice how we're going to play, then we should be good to go. We've talked about it a lot. We've talked about why, and um, we're trying to get them prepared um, mentally and physically. And we, we're conditioning more than I think they've ever done. We're lifting harder than they've ever lifted. We're trying to make sure their bodies are prepared and their mind is prepared to know that we've got to be strong, we've got to be in the best shape that we could possibly be in, and we've got to be peaking at the end of the season. You can't, I don't, I don't, they know we've discussed this. We, it doesn't matter if we go 30-0 at the beginning. It's, it's the end that counts. And they know that and understand that. We've talked about it a lot. And we've got to make sure that our body and our mind is right at that time. Panthers returned several key players to Williams Field in 2014, including their top three pitchers from a year ago. Hannah, Hannah does a great job. She's got the most movement um, that I've seen in a long time. She's got a lot of break, um, and as long as she uh, understands, you know, how to use that movement, and um, I think where she, you know, in the past, my understanding, um, is she's had a lot of arm issues. So that's the that's the thing we're going to try and stay away from as best we can is um, keeping that arm healthy. I think that's going to be the key to Hannah's success. You know, and, and with Steph Madej and, and Janelle, who I know people haven't really seen much of Janelle, um, Steph Madej right now is, is also thrown really well. She's picked up a new pitch and it's going to help her tremendously. Janelle's going to do a great, she did phenomenal in the fall too. And so I'm really confident in her and I'm hoping with the three different pitchers, because they're very different. Ninja by far has got the best movement, and she's probably going to lead in a lot of strikeouts. Um, and we need to keep her and make sure that she is able to continue to do that through the tournament and not peter out like she has in the past. And so that is our goal. I know that's her goal. That is our goal. We need her then. We don't need her in February to be the best. We need her to be the best in May. And so that's our goal. Coach Nicholson comes to EIU from Cleveland State, where she compiled a 211 and 152 record over seven seasons as the head coach at her alma mater, and she says she's happy to be at EIU. Just this is just a totally different atmosphere than um, where I came from, and um, you know I like the college setting, uh, the college atmosphere, the tradition that goes on here, the pride, and uh, that's just all, very different from where I came from and the family atmosphere. So that's what brought me here, and um, I, it, it's exactly what I thought it would be, so I'm very happy here. I think that going from Coach Judy to Coach Nicholson was a, a big difference in the coaching styles. Not, um, probably, we probably do a little more like working, working out, uh, running, lifting harder than, I'm, than we did with Coach Judy. But um, I think that that's only going to benefit us in the long run. At the end of the season, we'll still be all fresh and ready to go at the end, hopefully get past the tournament. I would say I'm pretty aggressive. Uh, I like to put a lot of pressure um, offensively on teams. I, I like, we have great defense, we have great pitching, and, and, and that's, that's huge. Um, offensively, though, it's, I, you're going to see a different game from Eastern. So that's where you're going to see, I think, a different attitude, a different game, and a different approach. Um, and that will show in my style. I guess we just, I just need to keep on working harder. I mean, after having a good season last year, it's going to be hard, you know, to try and get all those goals that I had last year. But if I just keep working hard, I'm hoping that I can do whatever I need to do to help the team win. EIU will have nine seniors on the roster this season, and one of them, right-handed pitcher Hannah Menega, says it'll be a change in leadership from last year's squad. I think we have a lot more seniors showing more leadership this year. Compared to last year, we had Abby Wood last year, and she's always the loud talker of the group. So we have a couple girls this year that are really, I think, stepping it up and being more vocal and really leading us this year. I think these nine seniors, the, the positive about these nine seniors is they are awesome kids. Um, all nine of them, they're great. They're great role models, um, you know, in the classroom, out of the classroom, in the weight room, they're great kids. And um, I'm really looking forward to them taking this team and guiding them into the tournament and through the tournament. And, and that's what I'm looking I want them to have the confidence to know that we can do this, that we're going to do this. 
and um, you know these nine seniors are going to be the ones that are going to lead us the way. The Panthers open their season next week at the Illinois Chicago Rosemont Rumble, and their home slate starts March 15th at Williams Field against OVC rival SEMO. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Brad Kupiak. And thanks for watching another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. Reminder, EIU men's and women's basketball this Saturday against SIU Edwardsville, 2 o'clock at 4.15 on WIU TV. We're sorry we didn't have them with us this week. We had a conflict with the men's basketball game on the day we taped against Cleveland State. And then Coach Black was out recruiting to get that next crop of Panthers. We're going to wrap up this week's show with some of the highlights from Jimmy Garoppolo at the two All-Star games in which he played. Thanks for watching, everybody. Jimmy Garoppolo, the quarterback from Eastern Illinois. Last week at the East-West game, he was the MVP of the game after an outstanding week of practice. You love the quick release. You love the quick feet. He was excellent. Let's see if he can translate, translate that today to his performance in the Senior Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo, he was fantastic this last fall. He was enticing last week at the East-West Shrine game. And here he is, first down and 10 with 48, going to the air right away. Athletic throw to his left, can't throw it any better. Catching the ball the third time is Mike Davis. And that was a nice little snapshot of Jimmy Garoppolo. Got the shoulders around for a strike, 12 yard gain. And Garoppolo, guys, I mean, this is the momentum he's just carrying right over from the east west. And you love the footwork he has in the pocket, but also the ability to get outside, square his shoulders, and deliver the ball accurately. Second down and 16 for Garoppolo. Play action again to Davis, the leading receiver for the Longhorns this past season. People, you're not too bad at that season. Third down 11, Garoppolo. In a tailback, Jared McKinnon, the quarterback is Garoppolo. Crockett Gilmore with a touchdown pass, and now a first down reception. And we got a little glimpse of that last week. DJ with Jimmy Garoppolo getting rid of the football quickly. There's one more example. Very quick feet, very quick release, and he's also got a quick mind. You don't hear that term often when you're talking about quarterbacks. He's able to process very quickly, get from one to two, and even to three at times, and his feet always follow his eyes. He throws on balance. He can throw accurately. Doesn't have wow size or wow arm strength, but everything else is pretty good. Is he a lot like the John Wooden expression of be quick, be quick, but don't hurry? So his mind and his feet are in sync together. As soon as he decides where it's going, that quick compact delivery like that right there allows it to go just where he wants it to. Third down and three now for Garoppolo. Pocket collapsing down and just fires down for a He said, was anybody open or wasn't there some kind of penalty? Help me out. I mean, that was big for him to get away from Kareem Martin, and there's no intentional grounding in the game today. It doesn't matter from where they throw it, in pocket, not in pocket, the whole deal. They try to protect the quarterback as much as possible. WEIU, your home for Eastern Illinois Panther Sports presents Panther Sports Talk. Highlights, player features, and coaches interviews with host Rich Moser. All things you need to know, EIU Sports on Panther Sports Talk. Join us Wednesday at 6.30 on WEIU. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running.